Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Ammal Mahalingam Engineering College, Koyil Vanni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture series on the subject Fluid Mechanics and Machines. And this is lecture number 3.2. We continue with the fluid statics. So, in the earlier lecture, we discussed the uh, fluid stat statics. This is lecture also we continue. The topic for the discussion in the fluid static, total pressure, center of pressure, buoyancy, center of buoyancy, metacentric height. In the earlier lecture, previous lecture, we discussed the total force and the center of pressure for of horizontal plane, vertical plane and the submerged curved surfaces. And we continue with the other topic. So, the buoyancy, center of buoyancy and metacentric height will be discussing here. The learning outcome for this lecture, at the end of the lecture, the students will be able to calculate the total force and center of pressure of lock gates, define buoyancy and center of buoyancy, calculate the metacentric height. And we first topic, so we take the total, uh, discuss the total pressure and center of pressure for lock gates. And this is the diagram of the lock gates. So, the two views, elevation and the plan of the lock gates are given here. There are two gates. So, the two gates are mentioned by A, B and B, C and this is the upstream side of the water. So, the water is stored here in a like a structure like dam and we have a gate and the gate can be. So, when you open the gate, the water will flow. This is the downstream side of the water. So, this is the surface, water surface on the downstream side. This is the water surface at the upstream side. So, the water surface on the upstream side is at the height of H1 and water surface on the downstream side is at the, at the height, height of H2 and for the log gate we have the hinges at the two ends. So, here we have the hinges. So, about the hinge the log gate can swing uh, either close or open. So, the F1 is the distance at a height of H1 by 3 and similarly F2 equal to H2 by 3. And we define log gates are used for changing the water level in the canal or a river for navigation purpose. The figure shows the elevation and the plan of the log gates. The log gates A and B are fixed using the two hinges at the end A and C. So, the C is the hinge, A is the hinge. So, they are fixed about the hinges. In closed position, the log gates meet at point B at an angle. The, and the angle between the log gates is equal to 180 minus 2 theta. So, 180 is the angle here, vertical horizontal angle and this is the angle theta and uh, 2, this is this is inclined at an angle theta, this is also inclined at an angle theta. So, that is calculated 180 minus 2 theta. So, let F is the force, resultant force due to the water on the gate B or BC acting at right angle to the gate. And uh, R is the reaction at the lower and the upper hinges. P is the reaction at the common contact surface of the gate acting at right angles. Theta is the inclination of the log gates with the normal to the sides of the log gates. It will be calculated from the angle between the log gates. So, theta is the angle of inclination. The force P and the F, the force forces P and the F meet at a point O as shown in the figure in the triangle ABO. So, uh, angle of the triangle ABO, uh, angle OAB or angle ABO equal to theta. Resolving all the forces along the gate AB and putting equal to 0, we obtain R cos theta minus P cos theta equal to 0 or R equal to P. And similarly, resolving the forces about the gate normal to the gate AB. So, R sin theta plus P sin theta minus F equal to 0. So, F equal to R sin theta plus P sin theta which is 2 p sin theta. So, p equal to f by 2 sin theta. So, here resolving the horizontal, I mean a b putting uh, resolving the forces along the gate, we have r equal to p. Resolving the forces normal to the gate, we have p equal to f by 2 sin theta. Let h1 is the height of the water in the upstream side, h2 is the height of the water in the downstream side. F1 is the water pressure on the gate upstream side act as a distance of H1 by 3 from the bottom. F2 is the 
water water pressure on the gate on the downstream side act at a distance h2 by 3 from the uh, h2 by 3 from the bottom uh, with w l is the width of the gate so now water pressure on the gate on the upstream side f1 into rho g a1 h bar equal to rho g into h1 into l divided into h1 by 2 so h bar is equal to h1 by 2 and the area equal to h1 into l and f1 equal to rho g l into h1 square divided by 2. So, f1 is the force acting on the gate on the upstream side. The water pressure on the gate on the downstream side f2 equal to rho g a2 into h2 bar. So, rho g is a constant. So, a2 equal to h2 into l h2 bar equal to capital H2 divided by 2. So, the f2 force f2 on the downstream side rho g l into h2 square by Resultant force F equal to F1 minus F2, which is rho g L H1 square by 2 minus rho g L H2 square by 2, and R T is the reaction at the top of the hinge, top hinge, and the R B is the reaction at the bottom hinge. So the total reaction R equal to R T plus R B. Now the resultant the resultant water pressure F water pressure F acts normal to the gate. The two hinges resist the water pressure and the resistance shared equally by the two hinges. So, the taking moment about the lower hinge R t sin theta into L equal to F 1 by 2 into H 1 by 3 minus F 2 by 2 into H 2 by 3. So, resolving the forces horizontally. So, R t sin theta plus R b sin theta equal to F 1 by 2 minus F 2 by 2. So, solving the above equations for various for the value of R t and R b uh, we can calculate the R t and R b from the two equations. So, this is the calculate R t and R b. So, the reaction at the top hinge and reaction at the bottom hinge that is what required and the force we have to calculate. So, all these equations we have to remember R t R t equal to sin R t sin theta L equal to F 1 by 2 H 1 by 3 minus F 2 by 2 into H 2 by 3 and resolving the force these two equations R t sin theta plus R b sin theta equal to F 1 by 2 minus F 2 by 2 and these two equations we have to remember and the value of F1 and F2 also we have to remember H1 is the height of the water in the upstream side, H2 is the height of the water in the uh, downstream side. So, F1 and F2 value also we have to remember uh, solving these two equations we can calculate the reaction at the hinge, top hinge RT and bottom hinge RB can be determined. The next topic is buoyancy and center of buoyancy. So, buoyancy when a body is immersed wholly or partially in a fluid, it is subjected to an upward force which tends to buoy or lift it up. So, when you when you when you have a body immersed partially or wholly in a fluid, so an upward force is acting at the bottom surface of the object that will tends to buoy the object or lift it up. This tendency of an immersed body to lift to be lifted up in the fluid due to an upward force opposite to the opposite to action of gravity is known as buoyancy. This tendency for an immersed body to be lifted up in the fluid, so due to an upward force opposite to action of gravity is known as buoyancy force. So, the upward force against the gravity is called as buoyancy, the gravity the force against the gravity is called as buoyancy. The force tending to lift up lift up the body under such conditions known as buoyant force or upward force. So, the force which is acting against the gravity to lift the object is known as upward thrust or buoyant force. The magnitude of buoyant force can be determined by the Archimedes principle. When a body is immersed in a fluid either wholly or partially, it is buoyed or lifted up by a force which is equal to weight of the fluid displaced by the body. So, the force is equal to weight of the fluid displaced by the body. This is from the principle of Archimedes principle. The center of buoyancy, the point of application of the force of buoyancy on the body is known as center of buoyancy. It is always the center of gravity of the volume of the fluid displaced or center of area of the immersed section. So, center of buoyancy and center of gravity they are important. So, center of buoyancy is the point of application of the buoyant force in the 
surface in the body. Depending upon the ratio of weight of the body W and the buoyant force Fb, there are three possible cases. W is greater than Fb. So, when the weight of the body is greater than the buoyant force, the body tends to move upward and eventually sink. Sorry, the body tends to move downward and eventually sink. When the weight of the body is more than the buoyant force, the body will sink. When W equal to Fb, the body floats and it is partially submerged. So, when the weight of the body is equal to the buoyant force, the body floats and partially submerged. When W weight of the body is less than the buoyant force, the body is lifted upward and rises to the surface. So, the, the center of buoyancy, buoyant force is very important in the design of ship. And we calculate the stability of the floating body. Consider a cross section of the body floating in a static mass of the fluid at rest as shown in the figure. So, we have a body A, B, C, D and it is floating, it is in the liquid. The weight of the body W act vertically downward through the center of gravity. So, weight is acting downward. And the buoyant force Fb acts upward through the center of buoyancy. So, the center of gravity, the weight of the fluid is acting through the center of gravity towards the downwards direction and the weight of the uh, buoyant force Fb is acting in the upward direction through the center of buoyancy B. The center of buoyancy and the center of gravity of the immersed portion A, B, C, D of the body and it lies vertically below the center of gravity of the body. So, the center of buoyancy is always below the center of gravity of the body. So, the, so the object is stable. So, the center of buoyancy of the is the center of gravity of the immersed portion of A, B, C, D of the body. So, for the entire object, center of gravity is G. For the immersed portion, the center of gravity is B, which is the center of buoyancy for the entire object. Let the body tilt through a small angle of heel theta in the clockwise direction due to the some external force. So, look at here. Now, the object is tilted by a small angle theta. The body has now submerged portion A dash B C D dash. So, A dash D dash A dash B C D dash is the submerged portion of the instead of A B C D before tilting. A triangular wedge A O A dash A O A dash is as on the left has merged from the liquid and the wedge D O D dash on the right side has moved into the fluid. So, the A O A dash is coming out of the liquid surface and D O D dash is moved into the fluid. Due to this, this redistribution, due to this redistribution, the center of buoyancy shifts from the B to the B dash. So, center of buoyancy shifted from B to B dash. So, B dash is the centroid of the immersed portion A dash B C D dash of the body. So, this is the centroid of the, uh, the immersed portion. What is the immersed portion now? A dash B C D dash. So, however, the center of gravity of the body remain unchanged. There is no change in the center of gravity. So, because of tilting the object, the B is shifted to B dash. So, B dash is called a center of centroid of the immersed portion of the uh, body. Now, three point of intersection. The, the point of intersection of the line of action of the buoyant force before and after heel is called as metacenter. So, point of, in, point of interaction of the line of action of the buoyant force before and after heel is called as metacenter and the distance gm is called as metacentric height as shown in the figure. So, the gm. So, this is the metacentric height. So, the based on the from the, the stability of the floating body depends on the position of m relative to the center of gravity g. The position of m ab about the center of gravity. There are, three, there are three possible cases as shown in the figure. So, look at here, this is the metacentric, metacenter. The metacenter is above, above the center of gravity. So, here metacenter below the center of gravity and here metacenter and the center of gravity are in the same point. Now, this is the called as stable equilibrium. This is unstable equilibrium and this neutral equilibrium. So, we discuss one by one. If M lies above G, then the metacentric height Gm is regarded as positive and the system will be in the stable equilibrium. This is what the first diagram. So, M is above G, 
when MO, MO metacentric height is G is regarded as positive and the system is in the stable equilibrium. When the small disturbance or tilt of the body, the restoring couple is formed WX which will bring the body to the original position. When there is a force acting here, uh, disturbance acting here, so the couple is created and the couple will bring back the sub body to the original position. Always the ships are designed with the GM positive for all angles of heel which may be encountered. So, this is the basic actually the, 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 the M metacentric height should be uh, the above the center of gravity of the object so that any disturbance in the uh, windy due to the wind so it will there will be couple formed and the couple will bring back the solid bring back the ship to the original position. If M lies below G then the metacentric height GM is regarded as negative and the system is unstable equilibrium. The couple formed due to the disturbance will further tilt the body called overturning couple. So, this will leads to the accident, this will leads to the I mean the sink of the, the, the object will the body will sink into the water. When M and G coincide the body is state of ne neutral equilibrium. So, the three cases are discussed and the first case M the actually G M is positive, the metacentric height meta center should be above the center of gravity of the object. Determination of metacentric height. There are two methods to determine the metacentric height uh, called the analytical method and the experimental method. So, normally in the fluid mechanics laboratory, you, you may be doing experimental determination of metacentric height. So, we discuss both the method. Analytical method, consider a floating object with a portion A, B, C, D below the liquid level as shown in the figure. So, we have the same two diagram. Now, now the object is given a small tilt with an angle theta from its initial upright position. Because of the displacement, the center of buoyancy is displaced from B to B1 or B dash. The shift results a couple of moment WBM tan theta. So, couple of moment equal to W weight of the body BM into tan theta, which tends to restore the object to the original upright position. Volume of the liquid displaced remains the same. The area O A A dash emerges out of the liquid is equal to O D D dash that has emerged into the liquid. The volume O D D O D D dash emerged into the liquid. So, area into length 1 by 2 O D into D D dash into length normal to the paper. So, which is 1 by 2 into B by 2 into B by 2 tan theta into L. So, B square L by 8 into tan theta. So, with the weight of the liquid on O D D dash, so this equal to delta F B equal to W into B L square by 8 into tan theta. So, the bion force acting in the upward to the on the wedge O D D dash, so it is delta F B equal to W B square L divided by 8 into tan theta. So, the bion force acting downward O A A dash delta F B equal to W B square L by 8 into tan theta, each act at distance of B by 3 from the center. So, the these two bion forces constitute a couple of magnitude delta m equal to delta f b into 2 b by 3. So, w into b square l divided by 8 into tan theta into 2 b by 3 equal to w into l b cube divided by 12 into tan theta where l b cube by 12 equal to the moment of inertia. So, w into i into tan theta where i is the moment of inertia of the floating object about the longitudinal axis. So, this moment about uh, must be equal to the opposite to the moment caused by the movement upward thrust from the B B 1. So, W B M tan theta equal to W capital W is the weight small w is the specific weight. So, W weight of the object B M into tan theta equal to small w i into tan theta. So, B M equal to i into. So, the capital W equal to weight of the liquid equal to small w into volume. So, small w is getting cancelled, this is equal to i by v. So, moment of inertia of the floating object about the longitude and axis divided by the volume of the liquid displaced. So, the b m equal to the metacentric height b m, I mean b m equal to the i by v. So, the metacentric height g m equal to b m plus b g. The positive sign will be used for i g, g is lower than b, a negative sign used for if g is higher than g. So, there are two options. G may be above the B or 
b uh, g may be above the b or g may be below the b so depending on the condition the positive negative sense will change so the metacentric height gm equal to bm plus or minus bg and the experimental method so we take the object once again submerged in the liquid and uh, the metacentric height of a floating body like a ship may be found out experimentally provided the center of gravity of the floating body is known center of gravity is g is the center of gravity that all the articles are arranged in such that such a way that the floating body is perfectly horizontal as shown in the figure a so this is perfectly horizontal and body is floating and the body is floating w is the weight of the ship including w1 small weight g is the center of gravity of the floating body b is the center of buoyancy of the floating body when the weight w1 is moved to the right right end by a distance z from the center of floating body the floating body is tilted by an angle theta as shown in the figure when w1 is shifted here so the object is tilted and by an angle theta so because of that b is shifted g is also shifted now the center of gravity is shifted to g1 and center of buoyancy is shifted to b1 under equilibrium the moment caused by the movement of the load w1 through a distance z is equal to the moment caused by the shift of the center of gravity g2 g1 so the moment due to the change of g g g1 into w which is w into gm into tan theta the moment due to the movement of the weight w1 equal to w1 into w1 into z so moment due to the change of weight w1 equal to w1 into z so these two are equal w into gm tan theta equal to w1 into z so the metacentric height gm is given by gm equal w1 into z divided by capital w into tan theta so w1 z capital w and theta so this is the experimental method of calculating the metacentric height so we stop here so these are all the books i published in mechanical engineering subject uh, you may find fluid mechanics and machinery you can refer to the book for additional information on the subject and i have i have a youtube channel where i upload the video lectures on the subject mentioned in here you can subscribe and uh, use the videos for your better learning thank you for watching please post your comments subscribe the channel and you can contact me through my mail id or whatsapp number for further clarification on the subject so thank you we'll meet again in another video on the subject fluid mechanics